Why is it so common amongst uh, the elderly to have vertigo issues? Right. So vertigo is basically a symptom. It's a basically a rotational spinning, but the part of the problem is uh, it becomes more common as people get older and on top of the other complexities that they have, medications, dehydration, all of the other complexities that come with people as they go into their 80s and 90s, how do you tease out one type of vertigo versus another, one cause of dizziness versus another? The just the perception of it's just another older person experiencing dizziness and what do we do about it? having the knowing where to send those people who's the correct specialist where do we send them and the medical algorithm is basically okay uh primary care doctor to ear nose and throat doctor to neurologist um and that's about it but that that may not get them to where they want to be so you send the person down a cascade of multiple medical tests and imaging um the doctors are trying to make sure that they're not missing a stroke or a tumor and for good reason because again uh, vertigo is just a symptom it's rotational spinning it can cause it can be caused by a brain tumor or a cardiac uh, a cardiac arrhythmia problem or all sorts of things but the most common cause of, of vertigo is basically when some crystals in your inner ear in your inner ear balance system basically get loose and get into a place where they're not supposed to so the treatment then is a simple repositioning maneuver on a bed or a, or a therapy table or a massage table. And it's as simple as that. There's no medical procedure. Uh, there's not medication. There's not anything that's that complex. It's just the right specialist that addresses the right thing at the right time. And part of the problem in healthcare is it's become very much a checkbox system. And also we need everything to be quantified. The insurance companies, especially, they want to know what's the medical test that shows this, or what's the imaging, where's the lesion that shows, that shows this, right? We, the proof, of, the proof of, of everything. And what's gone by the wayside quite a bit is just the bedside exam putting your differential diagnosis, putting together all these different symptoms, the person's age, their, their gender, their, um, their symptoms, how did it, how did it start happening? Uh, what are they experiencing? Has what's made it better? What's made it worse? Um, if you touch the pain, you know, what does it feel like? Where, well, how does the pain get recreated or how does the dizziness happen? How did it come on? All those basic things have now kind of gone by the wayside and gone towards the dependence of more and more medical testing and be, having to quantify everything. The problem with dizziness and vertigo is there isn't much medical testing That's what I was to ask. help quantify it. Yes. It is more the, the bedside exam. And that means you just need the right specialist who really knows what they're doing to be able to time. figure out what's going on. It doesn't take that much. Well. That depends on what you call by a lot of time. Um, now it it takes a you know the treatment for reposi for repositioning for positional vertigo. Yeah, that can take some time, especially if it's an older person because you're having to roll. They're having to roll on a bed or a therapy table or or a doctor's table, and that can take time. And they have to hold positions for a certain amount of minutes. So you know you might be taking forty five minutes with an with an older person to treat them for a positional vertigo um and so that can be a challenge as well if you're if you're in in, in an ear, ear nose and throat doctor's office right